Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and this is the Civivi Tack and Tweeze. It is a tactical set of tweezers. Now I know, stop rolling your eyes and listen to this. First of all, it was designed by Bob Terzola, and he is the guy who basically coined the term tactical knife. In fact, uh, his most popular knife um, is the Advanced Technology Combat Folder, the ATCF. He's worked with all kinds of different companies like Spyderco, uh, Microtech. He is the first guy to ever use G10 scales on a production knife, first to use um, ATS-34 steel on a production knife, first to ever use uh, laser cut um, blanks instead of stamped blanks on a production knife, first to use a commercially uh, produced liner lock on a knife. Um, anyway, he is, if anyone can call something tactical, it is him, and I have to agree. The more I use this thing, the more I'm impressed. I have seen it on uh, Amazon and actually other websites for quite a while, um, but didn't really take it seriously. Um, but I've always thought about it, and then um, Civivi contacted me, wanted to know if I was interested, absolutely. I mean, I've been looking at something like this, you know, a, a good set of tweezers like this uh, for quite a while, and in this one, and this one in particular, but I just, it seemed like a like an overbuilt product, but when you use it, you see why. So first of all, you've got two components, the tweezers out here, and then this this box um, that they store in, and that's important if you actually want really fine tips, and I will show you under the microscope just how good these are compared to a lot of others. And it's got this um, small wheel that locks it into position, so that holds it snug, fits great in the hand when you're using it, but then easily retracts. You don't apply a lot of pressure, all it's got to do is keep the, the tweezer section from moving in and out. So, look at it really close. It's got a kind of a, a faux-aged brass finish. Um, when I put a magnet to it, the um, slide that out of the way here. This uh, is non-magnetic, this part here, so it might be brass. Um, the tweezers, however, are magnetic. Um, and that's pretty common across a lot of tweezers. Unless you really need non-magnetic ones, you go with titanium, you go with plastic. Um, even some of the stainless steel ones, like this This is one of my favorites right here. This is the Hackensack stainless steel is quite magnetic. Um, so titanium is, is one of your options. Even the iFixits, which I'll, I'll show, um, these ESD iFixits, uh, they have got um, a little bit of magnetism to them. They're attracted to these neodymium magnets. But anyway, back to this guy. So simple design. Um, beautiful execution. Like put a lanyard on it or a, a key ring or something if you are the kind that wants to carry this around. Now I do carry tweezers. In fact, this has been one. This is a kind of a first aid tweezer. This is, they sell these um, in outdoor stores. You can buy them on Amazon. Um, they're great because of their simplicity, but you really have to work on them. And I, gra I have a couple pair, but I grabbed a pair that needs work. Um, I'll actually show you this under the scope, but the way they stamp that hole messed it up so they can't close because there's parts there. Um, compared to the titanium tweezers, I like these simple, but when you get to the actual function of the tweezing tip, now it took me a while, I had to generate some slivers um, in various places to try to, you know, pull them out. Um, these are by far now my favorites. Um, these had been these don't really work that well on slivers um, because you can't, there's not enough oomph up at the front. Um, you can't grab tight. So this one you can, you could really snug down on something, which is important. Um, but anyway, let's take a closer look at the tips. Um, first of all, you can see a little bit of a, um, kind of a, a knurling jimping there. Got good control, good precision. The balance is tail heavy. Um, that's common on tweezers. Knipex makes some tweezers for electronics use. I've been tempted to get those to try them out. But let's, what I'm going to do is throw these under the scope and compare them to some others so you can really see how these perform. Um, on Amazon right now, they're around $26, $27. I don't know if that stays. Um, put a link below. You can get them on various sites. Uh, but this is really a pair of tweezers. I know you probably have all seen them, but take them serious. Let me show you how. So what I'm going to do is 
is bring up this uh, microscope here, cut a light, and show you how these compare. So you can see my workspace down here and, uh, and the screen. Hopefully it'll, um, it'll stay fairly uh, clear for you. Line that up a little bit. Um, so anyway, there's the tips. Um, point my lights back on here. It's going to get pretty bright down there. But you can see just how precise those tips are. Focus this in a little bit more. Look at that, those tips right there. So as I bring them together. So uh, for comparison, I'm going to throw a penny on here. So you've got Lincoln's nose there. Look at that. So the question is, can you pick Lincoln's nose with these tweezers? And the answer certainly is yes. Just look at that closure. That is just amazing. Let me focus up on that so you can see just how, how good those are. But it's a little tough to tell without some comparisons. Okay, you see those? So here is the iFixits. We'll take a close look at those, how those tips work out. If you look at this, let me get the uh, get that in my finger here a little bit higher. Um, look at the closure. That's really what's going to be key here. They kind of pancake out. You see that? They don't even meet. They look like they do, but under magnification, get down to the sliver size or the small electronics, and they don't. In fact, they're even different sizes. Do you see that? So they kind of smear together. That's the best of the lot. Let's try my favorite hack and sacks here. These guys, I've used these forever. They do have a pretty good bite at the tip, which is why I've always liked them. But they're pretty blunt compared to, you know, hold these both there. Close these in. Let me move my penny off so you can maybe see it on the white here. Let me drop this down um, right to about there so you can easily see. So if I close these in, you can see the precision and the control much better. Plus, you can see the spring here. So as I squeeze these, um, I, lose a, I lose some of the strength there, whereas these, the way that they're designed, they keep biting even tighter because of that angle. That's, that's classic for, for being effective right there versus the kind of the, the sponging out. The next one, um, here's just a classic basic pair of traditional tweezers that you see about everywhere, inexpensive. Uh, these things... They don't even close at the tip. You know, a lot of times we, what we have to do is we go up to the very tips and we bend them a little bit to try to get them to close, but I can actually see space right there, which means I cannot grab at the absolute tip. Again, compare them to the Civivi, which are incredible. Uh, classic here, the traditional Swiss Army tweezers, they actually are surprisingly good, but they just have no strength. And because of their blunt ends, you can see at the blunt end, they can't really grab a sliver very well. Better than nothing? Yeah, but not a lot better than nothing, as you can see. Right there, get that focused in. Um, plastic tweezers, they're good for bigger things like coins. They don't even line up, and they certainly don't close all the way very well. Here's the titanium ones. I had these in a review earlier. Um, you can see they close. They're like duck-billed pliers. You miss out. See that little notch right at the very tip? That notch it means that you can't actually um, grab something that's almost flush at the sliver level. These are more for handling, handling things than really going after something super tiny. 
Um, and now these guys that I told you about, uh, you can buy them all over the place. Um, but if you look, first of all, um, I'm squeezing right here and they don't close. Why? We, because of the, see the, the extra bit of material that's kind of sticking out there where they punched through to make these, I don't know, textured grip areas maybe, I don't know. Um, but what it's caused is for them not to close tightly because the metal touches, you can see that right there, and keeps the tips from fully clothing, closing. If you squeeze hard, yeah, you might be able to catch some light, but you can't catch anything else. So the, again, these are larger, big wood splinters, ticks, whatever. Um, but if you clean those up a little bit right there on the metal, then they're serviceable. They're small. They come in a little, usually in a little um, container like this when you buy them. They're great for first aid kits when you don't want a larger set of tweezers, but you have to finish work, fin do the finish work for them. But anyway, back to these tack tweezers. Just look at the, the machining on these. The logo, Bob Tazola. I mean, to put the time and effort into a pair of tweezers, they can call them tactical. Sure, whatever tactical is. Um, he does do a lot of military combat knives. It's what, that's mostly what he's known for. He's not known for, you know, more the designer gentleman folders. Um, so I'm impressed. Anyway, there is a tactical tweezer for you. Definitely something to put on your list. And with that, Doc out.